Hi everyone, Heather Coates with Environmental Health and Safety, and I'm here today to talk to you about disinfectants and disinfecting. So there's many different types of disinfectants. I have a few here modeled, um, but disinfectants can be bactericidal, sporicidal, uh, viricidal, um, and so they kill different types of harmful um, organisms, bacteria, virus, spores, mold, etc. So it's important to know what type of disinfectant you need to be using. There are several different types of common disinfectants that are used. We'll also provide a table of common disinfectants that gives you information such as the usable concentration, shelf life, and any of the hazards posed by these different disinfectants. The ones include sodium hypochlorate, which is your typical bleach, phenols, um, quat quaternary ammonium compounds, which are typically um, in your disinfectant sprays such as Lysol, hydrogen peroxide is a very common and cheap disinfectant, and then your alcohol base such as isopropanol or ethanol are very common disinfectants. Each of them have pros and cons. For example, alcohols are flammable. Your hyperchlorates are very corrosive. So you want to make sure that you choose an appropriate disinfectant for whatever you happen to be disinfecting so you don't end up damaging the materials that we're trying to keep clean. So we're going to talk about common disinfection. Um, after you've used a piece of equipment or before you use a piece of equipment, leaving your workspaces, things like that. Um, so first of all, I want to mention that chemical disinfectants are only for use on inanimate objects. Don't apply chemical disinfectants to your skin. Either wash your hands or use um, an alcohol-based hand sanitizer to wash your hands. They don't mix chemical disinfectants. They're not meant to be mixed. Um, harmful reactions can occur should the wrong types of disinfectants be mixed together. Um, you want to make sure that you properly use, store, and dispose of any sort of chemical disinfectants that you're using. Um, all chemical disinfectants have a large slew of precautionary statements, directions for use, etc. on their bottles per the hazard communication standard. So make sure that you review that information prior to using any sort of disinfectant. So let's talk basic steps to disinfection. First, you want to clear away any sort of debris um, or organic material first. Then you want to make sure that you um, prepare your disinfectant if it's something that needs to be prepared. Um, so here I have hydrogen peroxide, um, isopropyl alcohol. These are things that don't need to be prepared ahead of time. Depending on your concentration of isopropyl alcohol, um, it's most effective at a 70% um, solution. So you can take your concentration, dilute it with some water, and then you can achieve the appropriate um, <clears throat> concentration for use. So these are essentially self shelf stable. Your disinfectant wipes are also shelf stable. Your sp disinfectant sprays of different types are shelf stable. Um, the one disinfectant that I want to mention that is not able to be used straight out of a bottle typically is a bleach solution. You have to dilute your bleach. Uh, we recommend a 2% solution um, because bleach is very corrosive. So you want to make sure that you're not corroding any of the surfaces that you're actually trying to disinfect or decontaminate. Usually if you mix uh, your disinfectant in a spray bottle, make sure that you label it appropriately. Well, sometimes you're going to wear gloves, sometimes you're not if you're going to be using a disinfectant. Uh, I typically recommend wearing gloves if you do have them available, just so you don't have any of that chemical residue left on your hands. If you're working somewhere in like a laboratory space, you're already going to be wearing gloves uh, before you decontaminate your surfaces. So basic step, step one, I'm gonna talk about removing any debris. So that could be, you know, salt crystals, dirt, anything like that that's left on your work surface. Prepare your disinfectant. And then step three, you wanna apply disinfectant. See how well you can see this. And you want to apply enough disinfectant for that surface to stay wet for the appropriate contact time. Contact time is the amount of time that a disinfectant needs to be in contact with the surface to appropriately decontaminate or disinfect 
that surface. So every one of these disinfectants here will have a different contact time. Read your manufacturer labels to identify the appropriate contact time and make sure that whatever surface you're disinfecting, you choose the appropriate disinfectant. We also wanna talk about surfaces or items that should be frequently disinfected. So that's gonna to lead to include things like light switches, door handles, push handles on doors, um, the surrounding door panel where people often touch with their hands, um, common use equipment such as copiers or coffee makers, or um, shared laboratory equipment. These are things that need to be decontaminated and cleaned very regularly. Um, personal note, your electronics, your cell phones, your keyboards, your mouse for your computer, in your car, your steering wheel, your shift lever, um, the buttons on your radio, on your air conditioner. These are all things that we touch frequently. Uh, so making sure that we decontaminate those regularly our custodial staff um, here at Texas Tech will be wonderful in decontaminating those frequently touched surfaces daily. And we recommend that you decontaminate these items uh, before your shift is over. You can also decontaminate them at the beginning of your shift, especially if you have shared spaces where you know other people are working or shared equipment that you're sharing it's best practice for you to go ahead and disinfect that equipment prior to your use and then after your use is concluded as well, just to make sure that we are taking as many precautions as we can to keep everyone safe. Thank you for watching.